For the ones who don't know Priceline, I think you know, it's actually a $93 billion company. And Glenn built it. He went out into countries far away from the US, countries like the UK, bought Booking.com, Agoda, OpenTable, Kayak, and so on and so forth. Rentalcars.com. Huh? Rentalcars. Rentalcars. Don't forget that one. Um, and you became CEO for that, I yeah. think, by the beginning of the year. Yeah. And you told me many, many years that you don't really care about title. For you, it's about building. And it's, it's building a platform for entrepreneurs. So obviously, my first question can only be, do you like your new job? I do like my job. It's very exciting. And one of the things that's a little bit different Whereas before, I was dealing with the acquisitions and the corporate structure and things of that nature. But one thing I didn't deal with a lot was customer service. And one of the things that I've learned now is the value of providing great customer service. And I'll tell you, I see some things, sometimes things go wrong. It's nobody's fault. Perhaps there's a weather event or something happens. And then for us, for Booking.com or Priceline.com or go to whoever it is, being able to help that customer being able to solve that problem right away, the joy, the thanks, the gratitude that that customer feels, you just know that they're going to be loyal to you for a very long time, but even more, you just feel good that you're able to provide something. For so many people, travel is very important. Many people, it's maybe their one holiday for the year or two holidays a year, and if it's not going right, it's a disaster. So if we can fix it for them, everybody feels good. So I recently booked a hotel through Booking.com in Spain. Thank you. And then I realized I booked the wrong date. Uh, it happens. I immediately emailed uh, Booking.com and said, help, help. And then I kind of got stuck between the hotel and Booking.com. So you often, the, the hotels you represent, you also depend on the customer service of the hotels, of the hotels. Well, are no, you supporting them? With no, don't tools? forget, we, you know, we are the advocate for our customers. And we do everything we can. Now, perhaps someone books something that is non-refundable or non-changeable, and we'll still work with those customers to try and make it right if we can. Um, one of the great benefits of our system and our platform is that we're able to do that customer service in 43 languages. We're doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So let's say somebody books a hotel in a place where there's only a couple of people who work there, and they certainly don't speak Chinese. We're able to provide uh, that for that customer and be able to intermediate and make it right for them. That's one of the most powerful things. And by the way, it doesn't cost the hotel a dime, a cent, a euro, a yen, a remibi. It doesn't cost them anything. That's a competitive well, advantage then versus the previous speaker. I don't think they provide customer support to the hotels. No, I don't think so either. So how many hotels do you have on the platform today? Well, you know, we're growing all the time. Like bookable. Well, like it's always bookable. But we have over a billion, 200,000, and we're growing, growing, growing. We believe that breadth is really important. Having as many uh, properties, and it's not just hotels. We talk hotels, but don't forget, we have vacation rentals, we have apartments, we have every single thing that's available around the world for people to stay in. Because we don't tell you what you should choose. We let you choose what you want. And for me, the most frustrating experience as a conference organizer, when we try to book hotels for our attendees, we negotiate a price, and then next moment we see, hey, hold on, it's much cheaper than, booking.com is much cheaper than booking it direct. Are you having the strategy that you want to be a price leader in the market? How important is price to you? Trivago built a whole business on it. But often I see that you guys are the best price option. Is that something you check internally, that you're always competitive versus other OTAs? Well, we always want to provide the best price because price is very important to a consumer. But it's not just price, because many places you can get a similar price. You need to do more than that. You need to provide the content so they understand what they're potentially going to book. They need to understand a process that's easy. They need to have the way to pay that they want to pay. If they want to pay at the hotel, we have to provide them. That is the majority of the way Booking.com does it. Some people, though, would prefer to pay up early. Perhaps there's a currency issue and they want to lock up the price today. So we have that, too. 
you want to always be able to provide all the aspects of that fulfillment of what they want. So it's not just price. Price is critical, but so are a lot of other things. And that's why somebody who says, oh, we'll just have the best price and it'll be successful, I would disagree. You've got to do everything right. Does a merchant model still exist in your industry? The merchant model is when an OTA takes rooms on balance sheet and then sells them at the premium, or is it more like a commission model now? Well, there are two different things there, not to get too much in the weeds, but the merchant model by itself is really just paying up front, yeah. but it's not necessarily buying the room. That's a different way you're not taking the risk. Not taking the risk, right. But yes, look, there are many different ways to do a transaction. What we always want to do is provide the right method for the right customer and working with our partners doing what's best for them. Certainly there are times when somebody, and I'll give you a perfect example of this, when the euro was changing so dramatically in price, mm -hmm. and people who were going from Europe to America, some of them wanted to lock that price by using the merchant model, because that way they don't have to worry if they travel four months later and they show up at the desk, the euro isn't worth as much. It'll cost them more euros for this price that they got. The price that was quoted is the same price, but they want to lock it up. So the merchant makes perfect sense there. And also, for some people, we have our Priceline.com company, which does a package product. Packaging is done with a merchant product. So and how long you are at Priceline now? 17 years, more Se than 17 years. 17 years, and Priceline used to be one of these companies in the heydays, which went on a very, very large valuation, and I think you presented last year a little bit of the history. I want to ask you, um, about the future. I think you have been incredibly successful acquiring the right businesses and getting the right businesses into your group is one thing, but then operating them in a way that the founders are motivated and they're continuing the journey. Sometimes you told me this company is growing too fast, I shouldn't buy it yet because there's too much to do from the founders. If I, if I take them out now, the growth would slow. How do you motivate the founders within your group to perform well. Right, so certainly when we're looking at acquisitions, the critical thing is the people. It's the leaders, the founders, the management team, because we have to have a fit. There can be very good businesses with great leaders and great things, but they're not a good fit for us. So we have to make sure that's right. And it works the other way too. We have to be right for them. So you have to come together with an idea of how we're going to work together after the transaction. And it's worked out very well for us because we've been able to come up with different structures, different ways to incentivize, different levels of independence, depending on who it is, in different ways. And there's no one right way. There are many different ways to do it. And we've done everything from, for example, our big brands work independently for the most part, but we've also done a number of acquisitions that you may never have heard of that got integrated fully into one of those big brands. So it all depends on the situation that you're in, who the leaders are, what you're trying to achieve, and what do you bring into the group. For something that perhaps is just a little technology uh, acquisition. What was the last like, big deal you did? Well, the last big deal that we did was Open Table. That's yeah. last one. But as I'm sure you're aware that we recently uh, made. I'm a heavy uh, user, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. We, <laughs> we appreciate the business. Uh, as you know, we are currently in regulatory review for our Mamondo acquisition, which yeah. we're hopefully will close in the not so distant future. So we continue to look across the board for companies that we think will add value and add value either to the demand side, our travelers or the supply side, our partners, because we're a marketplace. Yeah. We have to provide value to both sides. Otherwise, there's no reason for us to exist. Well, as a user, the one experience I don't like, to be honest with you, and I, I spoke to you when you made CEO, that I have to use many sites for one trip, even if they are owned by the same company. I book my flights through Kayak, I book my hotels through booking.com, I book my rental car. I book my restaurant. Do you have a vision to become like the Amazon of travel and make it an end-to-end -end experience where I can also, as a traveler, save my preferences? Because I don't want to see 500 hotels when I go to Berlin. I want to see hotels which fit me, which I like. Exactly. Do, do you work on revolutionizing the experience there? You know, that absolutely is where we want to be using our data because we have, a huge, we have a data ocean to use and create that personalization that you want. And you want it done 
in an efficient, easy, frictionless way. Because travel is still a difficult thing for people. Go out and get a flight, you look, you come back, you look, you come back. By the time you finally book that flight, you're exhausted. You don't want to go and now get your hotel, you want to get a drink. So the thing is, how can we do this in a way over time that creates something that you actually find it to be effortless? And the, how do you do that? It's going to require technology. So we spend a lot of money getting technology experts, AI, data scientists, PhDs in computer science, so that we can come up with the new methods, the new ways that will enable what you want, which is what you want is less work, more personalization, ease. Relevance, uh, really. Relevance is where you want to be. And that's what we're building. Because that's it's like towards. Amazon, right? This customer bought this product. You bought a lot of things like him as well. You should also consider this. And right. For exactly. travel, you know through big data who is using what hotels, so exactly. you can come up with suggestions, right? And it's even more. And I know where you're going. For example, we know that perhaps people who stay at five-star hotels, they probably use more expensive restaurants. Yeah. So when they go to open table, we should be showing them. Yes. The exactly. That's the goal. Down the end of the day is to give you what you really want even before you know you want it. And make it easy to book also. Absolutely, ease of use, because things are changing, and that's why technology is so important. For example, my kids, they don't type into their phone at all. They speak into the phone all the time. Whatever it is, their math test, you know, like they, they ask questions for that. The thing is, we need to be able to develop all things so that whichever way the customer wants to do something, we can provide it. Now, it's not cheap. And the hotels really can't afford that. The issue is, we are better at it. That's our expertise. So we provide to the, our partner hotels, or any of our supplier partners, the technology to enable them to achieve what they want, whether it be a great experience at a hotel, a great meal at a restaurant. That's what their expertise is. Our expertise, technology. Amazon increased the size of the book market. Are you increasing the size of the hotel market because you make it easier to book? Well, there probably is a slight increase in that. <laughs> I don't think that's a big part of it. I think a much bigger part of it is the fact that as GDP goes up around the world, as people have more income, they want to travel more. And the biggest increase in travel comes from people who before couldn't afford to travel. As soon as they can afford to travel, they go, which shows the tremendous increase in China. The number of people in China who are traveling now, it's just growing fantastic. And the reason? Because people are developing the income to be able to afford it. I live in Luzerne, Switzerland. We have one million Chinese tourists per year. A million, a million people, <laughs> right? 30 years ago, how many? Two? Three? I don't know. I right. And that's what's continuing to happen. But you are right. Making things easier probably does promote some more frequency, perhaps short-term things. Because the truth is, if it's an incredible hassle to book something and travel, sometimes you say, ah, I can't be bothered. That's why we do want to make it as easy as possible. And that term frictionless, it really means something. So what's next for you on the M&A side? Since you became a CEO, are you still having your M&A hat on? And if so, what type of companies are you looking for? We have many travel startups and also larger companies here. Who should think about Priceline as a potential partner? Well, as you know, we never talk about specific targets. But what I can say... Categories. You know, category is that, and I'm saying over and over the idea that this technology issue making sure that you are out in front with the changes in technology is critical to any company that wants to continue to grow and be part of the leadership of any industry, any vertical. We know this, and we've seen it over time. If you go back to the time we were just a website, there was no such thing as mobile. If we hadn't developed great mobile technology, we wouldn't be where we are today. Mm. And it goes forward. So I mentioned this bit about voice. Well, I don't think I'm giving anything away when I talk about natural language processing, which is a very big part of AI for a lot of companies, because I mentioned those millennials who like to talk into their phones. We've got to be able to be able to process what they are saying so we can do that. Chatbots, messaging, there's so many new so things coming in. A lot of technology-driven acquisitions, it sounds. Well, it may be if we Maybe. find the right people, because we hire a lot of scientists, a lot of uh, people who have expertise in technical fields. We're a 
favorite place for people to come and work with us because of our cutting edge stuff, which makes people in that area enjoy coming to places. But the truth is you always need more. And sometimes it's easier to get a larger group by buying the company yep. as opposed to hiring one by one by one. So you own any Bitcoins? I will neither confirm nor deny, okay. <laughs> and I will say this because the tax people in my country are very, very ah. scrutiny. I wouldn't want to give them any sense that they should start looking at me even closer than they look already. I take it as a maybe. A maybe. <laughs> thank you so much. Marco, thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.